Hello all, and for the, I don't know, 20th time I've tried to make this video, we will try it again. So, this, as the title says, is going to be my review, plus a bunch of other stuff I will throw in as I'm talking. Um, because, you know, what's a script? Why would you do a script? That would probably make things a little easier. But, um, we're going to review uh, The Ring of Honor Final Battle 2020. Can't even remember the last pay-per-view from Ring of Honor I reviewed. Um, of course, I had reviewed the Pure Title Championship or Tournament, which um, I did like, though I did feel like they needed um, of uh, some more like marquee matches, and that would be my one complaint about this show is that there weren't a lot of like must-see matches. Pretty much everything on the show except one match I thought was good. Everything on the show. Um, not even okay. I thought everything except was was good. And the one match was, was pretty bad. But I also kind of get why it was bad. So I can kind of like uh, whatever. Um, but everything else I thought was was good. Um, I don't think anything was great. Um, but I did think everything was good. Um, and it was very enjoyable. And everyone that I have seen that have seen the show thought it was pretty good it was an enjoyable show especially after you know they've especially after like like okay so the one thing about ring of honor that really bugs me is the fact that to me um they need to be a little bit more aggressive about like guys they sign especially there are people in impact that i think ring of honor could sign that they don't sign or that people don't sign with impact and i'm sure there's a reasons and there's reasons that i don't know um but it just kind of amazes me because I think Ring of Honor's, with the exception of the guys from like CMLL, um, so you're talking Woosh and Dragon Lee, well, yeah, Dragon Lee, um, and those guys. Um, I, I really feel like the Ring of Honor roster is pretty just kind of okay. It's not even that great. But I think if you added some of the really good talent um, that's being misused and impact, um, it would make things a lot better. But it's not what we have. And that bugs me. Um, but this show was really good, um, I felt. And, um, yeah, we'll talk about them. Because, again, you know, I watched the... Like, I haven't watched Impact in, like, forever. I, th I think the last show I watched was the... Bound for Glory that had LAX versus LAX on it. I think it was Bound for Glory. I think it was the last show I ever watched. I watched. And then, of course, I watched the Kenny Omega show, which was not very good. Didn't make me want to watch any. Did not even want to make me watch the pay-per-view special, whatever that thing was. Um, and I don't know if that was taped or not. But um, everyone that watched it didn't think it was very good. Um, the last impact, nobody thought was very good, even though Kenny Omega was on it. Um, and it's like, I really wish they had done this with Ring of Honor. And maybe, maybe, if, if Marty Scroll hadn't gotten Me too that's exactly what we would have got. It's not what we've gotten, especially since, to me, Kenny Omega versus Roosh, um, is a much more interesting match. And throwing the Briscoes in with FTR and the Young Bucks is way better, in my opinion, than the Good Brothers, and I like the Good Brothers, and I think that'll be interesting once you throw them in there, but I think you throwing the Briscoes in there, and maybe eventually we will get to that, um, would be even more interesting, especially with the Briscoes talking about the fact that, you know, here these two teams are who, you know, get all the accolades, they don't, and they see themselves just as good, and they see themselves as all this stuff, and the only reason why they're not on these lists is because unlike the young bucks they wanted to stay home with their families and they want you know something like that where you really get that sort of dynamic um i would like that myself but that's just me i guess but um this show which was like i said really good really liked it really got me excited for ring of honor for the first time and i can't remember when but uh, we started with a four-way that would and if you don't know um, they had a bunch of matches signed for the show, and then they got COVID. Um, so you had Jay Briscoe taking on EC3. EC3 got COVID. You had the six-man tag 
um, where only one of the guys got to show up, which was Ray Horace, um, and he eventually get, but we'll get into all that. So, um, we start, and, uh, we had the, we had a foreman to decide who would take on Dragon Lee Vader that night, um, which was Tony Depp and Drake, uh, Dak Draper, Josh Woods, and LSG. I really like this. I think I like this more than a lot of people did. Um, I think a lot of people just were like, thought it was eh. And I, I thought it was actually really good. Um, I, I like the fact that it was... One thing I like about the way Ring of Honor does their multi-man matches like this, when they're, they're, they're four-way matches, is the fact that since they're like basically tag matches, even though this had Lucha rules, um, it makes it where guys just standing on the outside makes more sense. And so it's 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 frantic, but it's frantic with a little bit more sense, and I, I kind of like that. Um, when Dak Draper and Josh Woods were in the ring together, it was one way. When Tony Deppin and LSG were in the ring, it was another way. When Tony Drapen was in there with Josh Woods, um, it was I think it was Josh Woods. Um, it was completely different. So I like that. I like that in this match. Um, this was really good. Uh, Tony Deppin won which is important to talk about. Um, um, they played it up as a big upset that basically they had only brought Tony Deppin back because he was, the fans had, had wanted it because he uh, did he impressed everyone so well in the Pure Tournament. So there we go. Then we had the Foundation, who are basically the people who are really pushing for the um, Pure Tournament. Um, taking on Fred Yehi and Wheeler Utah, who were both in the Pure Tournament um, in a pure tag team match. The first time they've ever done this. Uh, the rules were basically you have your pure uh, pure match where you had um, you get three rope breaks, um, one punch, um, and after that you're disqualified. And basically the way they did the rope breaks were you had your three rope breaks, but the but what also counted as rope breaks were if you as your tag team partner, broke up a pin or submission. That took away a rope break. And if you did it again after you got, after that, you would be disqualified. Basic thing with the rope breaks, if, if you can do a pin or submission in the ropes, um, there's also, you to tag in, you have to tag hand-to-hand, -hand and you have to use the tag rope. So pretty much no blind tags. The only way you could do a blind tag would basically be having the tag rope, tagging the guy, and while he basically hit the ropes, that's the only by hand, no hit in the back, no you know no blind tags. Um, match was 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 good. Um, I really liked it. Um, you can definitely tell they're trying to go in this pure direction, which I kind of like. I hope they don't overdo it. Um, I think it works as far as we'll do this instead of being like a hardcore promotion, right? Even though they can do hardcore matches, but. But kind of doing that, I, I think it really works. Um, I really like this. I thought it was really good um, and definitely worth checking out as just like everything else pretty much on this show. So then uh, we opened the show. And um, when we, I, I should say that uh, when on the YouTube part of the show, which is the first hour, the first two matches, um, the commentary team was Caprice Coleman, Dalton Castle, and uh, I am Rick Rickabani, um, when they announced that uh, the six-man was off, but Ray Horace was there, um, Dalton Castle was like, hey, he doesn't have a match. I don't have a match. Let me go do that, which was good because I liked Dalton Castle, but him on commentary was aggravating. I'm not even going to lie. And on top of that, I'm not the biggest fan of Caprice Coleman. Um, and he's not horrible. Let me get that right. He's, he's compared to a lot of people who do commentary in pro wrestling, he is far, far, far from the worst. But he just he just grates on me for some reason. I, I think it's just a personal thing. Um, and just doesn't work. Now, um, Riccoboni, he's really good. And and he did a really good job, especially with the, the pure title matches. Like you just like really got it. Um, but so the when we got to the pay per view, and this is when they announced that uh, Jay Briscoe, of course, his match got messed up. Um, Shane Taylor and SOS, their match got thrown out. So Shane Taylor and Jay Briscoe got together in a, in a thing backstage. They decided to do a match together, um, which pretty good. And Ray Horace versus Dalton Castle. Pretty 
did too. So first match of the night, um, you had uh, the foundation of uh, Jay Lethal and Josh Gr- or Jonathan Grisham, who are the tag team title holders, taking on Mark Briscoe. And since Jay Briscoe had, was scheduled to do another type of match, Mark Briscoe, because the Briscoes had not gotten their rematch, um, took his rematch and teamed up with PCO. And PCO was crazy. And this match was really good because PCO was crazy. Mark Briscoe was crazy. It was basically like um, Jay Lethal and, and Jonathan Grisham were trying to wrestle um, this pure style. They kept wanting to go, oh, you're not wrestlers, you're not wrestlers, you're fighting. And they were like, yeah, we're fighting. And PCO did his crazy stuff. Uh, Mark Briscoe did his crazy stuff. This was really, I, I really liked this. Um, I thought this was, was, was a lot of fun. The ending kind of was flat, but um, still really enjoyable. And since every title was supposed to be defended on this show, uh, Jonathan Grisham um, had to wrestle twice. And they did try to give the six-man tag team belts to um, to uh, Shane Taylor and SOS, but, but um, they said, no, we're not winning them this way. They were just going to strip... Um, the other titles, I can't remember what they go, the mix is something. Um, uh, they were going to strip them because they hadn't defended them in a year, and they were all like, no, we don't want to win it that way, so there we go. Um, but yes. Uh, and then they, they teased that going forward, Jay Lethal and Jonathan Grisham were going to demand that all future tag team title matches were fought under um, pure rules. So, because that's the foundation's kind of a thing. Okay, then we had Ray Horses versus Dalton Castle. This was good. wasn't great. wasn't I, I thought it was. I, I probably liked it a little bit better than some people did, but I enjoyed it. It was. It was fun. It was more of a. You know. It, it was. You know. If you if you like it, it, I think this depends on your how much you like Dalton Castle. Myself. So there you go. Uh, then we had a a grudge match that was an actual grudge match. Um, Matt Taven and Mike Bennett, the returning Mike Bennett, taking on uh, Bateman and Vincent. This was absolutely a grudge match. They, they they went right at it. Mike Bennett, you know, sometimes Mike Bennett can be kind of just like Mike Bennett. He wasn't being Mike Bennett. He was definitely being um, the Mike, like a motivated Mike Bennett, which if you've been following Mike Bennett, you would understand why. Um, this was really good, though. Um, like I said, they, they it, it was definitely a grudge match. It wasn't one of those, oh, we've built up the this feud, and, and now we're going to have this feud, and instead of killing each other, we're just going to wrestle. And that's, that's just like, eh. Happens a lot of times in pro wrestling. They didn't do it here. It was a pretty good brawl. Um, so, yeah, it was, it was really good. At the end of the match, uh, Mike Bennett got brutalized his, his, his ankles, so you definitely can... Maybe see his, his wife was not here, but you can definitely see where his wife was probably, and I think I think they were kind of already announced that she's coming in. Um, so yeah, there we go. Uh, then we had Danhausen taking on Brian Johnson. Danhausen won. He would get uh, a title match. This went too long. Um, this was basically Brian Johnson just beating up Danhausen, um, and I'm not the biggest Danhausen fan, um, but. Um, this suffered greatly not being in front of a live crowd because his shtick, his shtick does work. I, I will admit that. And you can definitely see where what he does is, I'm not going to say unique, but, but pretty good. Because he's a heel who's not really a heel who's a heel. Now that sounds weird, but if you've never seen him, that's pretty much what he is. He's, he's a face who's really a heel. Um, even though he's not trying to be face, he's trying to be heel. So, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, that's kind of the way it is. Um, but, uh, but yeah, this went, this went about nine minutes, and it probably went about four minutes too long. It didn't need to go that way that long. Brian Johnson was beating up on him, took the mic, was, was basically doing the commentary during the mic that we basically had just seen on Dynamite. So that kind of was eh. But it went a little too long. Um, the ending was cute. Um, Dan Housen basically... Took the mic, um, rubbed it on his face, so now his his face paint was now on the mic, and then did the big boop sound and, and fell over and and did the hey look, 
And, um, you know, Brian Johnson got DQ'd, so Dan Housen won, so Dan Housen now has a contract, so there was all that. This probably would have worked really good in front of a live crowd, um, but that's not what we got, so, yeah. But this was this was not good because of that. This was not a good match at all. Uh, went too long and just wasn't good, so, yeah. Um, then we had the ROH television title match, uh, Dragon Lee taking on Tony Deppin. This was really good. Um, Tony Deppin definitely showed up. Dragon Lee definitely didn't look like he had any rust on him whatsoever. Um, just what you would expect. He, he, not a great Dragon Lee match, but a really good Dragon Lee match. So there was that. Uh, then we had Shane Taylor taking on Jay Briscoe. Um, this was basically just a brawl. Um, really good. Uh, Jay Briscoe sold his ass off for Shane uh, Taylor's punches. Um, was 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 good stuff. Um, they definitely definitely setting stuff up for the future. Then we had the pure title match, another really good match. Um, this probably went a little too long, but um, but uh, you had Jonathan Grisham taking on Flip Gordon. Um, the second time John Jonathan Grisham had, had wrestled. Um, really really good. I love the pure rules just because it. it you can do not, I don't want to say complicated storylines, but the but the storylines in the match basically just kind of work. You can do a lot of different things, um, and I really, really, I missed it so much. I understand why Gabe felt it kind of hit on its course, though I don't really think that's the, that was true, but I get it. But it's just really nice to get it back, and you know, if that's going to be Ring of Honor's identity, I think it's a good thing. I, I really do, and like I said, and. I think once the things are semi back to normal and they can get some like New Japan talent, the one thing about Ring of Honor is when they use New Japan talent, I really think they're like, oh, we need to bring in the big names. And you know, with with New Japan kind of doing their own thing, I think wanting the big names isn't necessary. I think just just wanting like, and not that they're not big names, but wanting like Suzuki and wanting Nagata. And guys like that, wanting Zack Sabre Jr., wanting guys that would fit in, especially with, like, can you imagine Jonathan Grisham taking on Zack Sabre Jr. or Nagata or Suzuki in these type of rules? Maybe not Suzuki, but actually, yeah, Suzuki in these type of rules. That might be pretty awesome. Um, or, or you know, I was thinking, you know, you could even, like, maybe if you started doing the tag teams like this, what if you had Suzuki and Nagata kind of put their put their hatred to, to the side and said, hey, you know, we could probably be a really good tag team with this. And, yeah, is that not the, the greatest tag team you never knew you wanted to see? Yeah. But, um, yeah, I, I definitely see – that's what I would like to say. I would like to see them use – like, I would say the young boys, but the young boys they've had over there did never really worked out. So, um, yeah. Um, but I would rather see those guys from Ring of, from New Japan come into Ring of Honor who you could beat and you didn't have to worry about not beating. Um, I, I Personally, I, I would much rather see that. So there you go. Then we had uh, Rush versus Brody King. For those of you that know, when it came to um, Dragon Lee and Rush, um, Rush, you know, everyone was like, oh, well, maybe he's not resigning this contract. Um, but he won here, so it looks like, and then there was an angle as well. Uh, Brody King definitely came in and worked his butt off. Um, Roosh looked um, like he was motivated, which always helps. Um, and they had a really good match. Um, the ending was a little eh because uh, Dragon Lee came out. Um, right? Was it Dragon Lee? Yes, Dragon Lee. Um, came out and, uh, and, did you know? And uh, or Rose Ray Force. Anyways, it was somebody came out and um, distracted the ref. And then Roosh's dad came out, hit Brody Lee over the head with a chair, allowing Roosh to win. Um, and then so it's like, oh, I guess he's staying in Ring of Honor. And then the Foundation came out because they were upset that he won like that. Um, and then later they announced that Roosh was like, hey, we want to bring our brother, who is the current Mystico, in as well. So, yeah, we want to make a family affair and for you, for them, all of that sort of stuff. Um, looked really good. Um, but, yeah, like I said, the, the, the show was a lot of fun, and it was really good. Um, wasn't great, 
no match of the year. Definitely wasn't like even match, even show of the year type thing. But if you're just looking for like just a, a good solid match, or if you're just looking to get back into Ring of Honor, I'd recommend the show because I think it will get you wanting to watch Ring of Honor again. I, I think that was one of the, the best things about the show is it made you, even though it wasn't like outstanding, oh my God show, it definitely was like, hey, I kind of want to see where things go from here. So I think, and to that part, they did a really good job. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, I mean, it, it's, like I said, it, it, one of the things, that, and I know the um, Voices of Wrestling guys said this, was, you know, watching the Ring of Honor show, especially since they didn't have the crowd, so it was a lot like watching Impact show. The difference was, is you had good wrestling with good finishes. That was, that was, that was the difference. And it makes a difference. It made me want to watch, made me wish Dynamite, made me watch AEW was working with these guys. Because I would much rather see, you know, the Briscoes with uh, the Young Bucks and FTR. I would much rather, that's much more interesting than me. Seeing Roosh with Kenny Omega is much more interesting than me. Than, and that's no slight to um, Rich Swan. I think Rich Swan's um, great, but it's just a, it, it's, to me, it's a bigger match. And that's one of my things with Impact is I feel like, 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 Impact is so weird because it's like you, you, the people aren't, aren't where you think they should be. And that's like, that's, and again, that's no slight against anybody who in those positions, but it's just kind of a weird thing. And, uh, but yeah, like I said, I, I, it, I recommend the show. I definitely think it's the show. If, if if you're looking maybe to get back in the Ring of Honor, this is the show to start with because I think it will just get you going. I mean, Final Battle was always like that final, get get this wacky year out of the way and just start up again with a bunch of new stuff. And I think that's definitely what we got here. So to that, I say thumbs up. Um, like I said, I really enjoyed the show. I, I think it was, it was really good. Um... You know, like I said, it, it 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 wasn't like an AEW level show, but it was definitely a really good show. And it's it's one of those shows where you wish that Ring of Honor was a definite number three, and that Impact kind of didn't exist, and they could kind of take some of that talent from Impact and, and use it. And I understand that's not the best for the wrestlers, but it would make things, I, I think, so much better because in the U.S., you know, there, there's They've always nationally, you know, two promotions, fine. Three promotions, eh. Four promotions, and eh, really not. So, you know, you definitely have that. So, it is what it is, you know. Um, but I really enjoyed it. So, there we go. And now and now we get ready for the greatness that will be, well, I shouldn't say greatness. We don't know how great it's going to be. Um, Russell Kingdom will probably be the next show I review. Um... But yeah, um, I would say the biggest negative about this show was it was in front of no fans, um, and there really I would say the Jay Briscoe and Shane Taylor match was the only one that is the type of match that doesn't that, that works the best um, with no fans in my opinion, which is kind of a hard hitting, more of a hard hitting match. Um, not that any other, like I said, I don't think anything except for the Dan Housen matches was bad um i don't even think there was anything okay i think it was all good um i don't think there was anything great but again i think this was a really i think this was an enjoyable show and if you're looking like i said to basically start up and start watching ring of honor again this is a great kind of just jump on in this is the type of show i wish impact had kind of given us that they did not give us so there is that so um, is that everything I want to talk about? Probably not, because I didn't really talk about AEW and the fact that, you know, that two weeks ago, beat, or what, last week, um, beat this week's Raw. Um, this week didn't, because it wasn't a very good show. And it was basically a bunch of guys that pretty much nobody wanted to watch. Which, if you saw the card beforehand, you knew that. So, that was... There was that. Um, the fact that we haven't seen Moxley on TV, I find interesting um, for many reasons. But there is that. And, uh, yeah, but um, I'm done. So, uh, like I said, I, 
I, I didn't say, but one of the things I'm going to try to do is do more videos, especially the new year. That's kind of like my new year's resolution. And I know I've said that I think every year for the last like three or four years and it just doesn't happen. But um, there's enough stuff that I should be able to watch, um, especially after Christmas is over where my life will probably hopefully go back to normal where I can watch like, you know, Ring of Honor on Monday and, um, you know, New Japan uh, Strong on Fridays, uh, do Wednesday, do Impact, um, and then whenever I can do, like, uh, shows on Saturday as far as, like, pay-per-views and big shows, New Japan shows, and, and, and kind of sprinkle them out there as well. Um, maybe do some more topic pay-per-views, but honestly, it, it's I, I feel like by the time I get to talking about a topic, um, it's already kind of ran this course, and there's enough people out there that I agree with that have already kind of put it out there that I feel weird, just kind of basically parroting what they say. So, yeah. Um, but, um, other than that, I'm out of here. So, you guys have a good one. Have a happy, merry Christmas, happy holidays, whatever. And I will probably see you guys for Wrestle Kingdom. So, there we go. Later.